This podcast is rated S for spoilers. Listener discretion is advised. Podcast. This is episode 71, the movie review of Coco. We will also be discussing the Incredibles 2 teaser trailer. I'm Graham Ricks, and here with me is the man that wants to put as much terrible Spanish in this podcast as possible, oh. Ian Jones. <laughs> only to only to make it, you know, playfully uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> if I might add, um, you and I have been sorting out these little... We got brand new microphones last time oh, yeah. for Justice League. So now I think we figured out how to make them sound. <laughs> and uh, when I say we, it's mostly you. It's on your oh, end. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I, you know, Justice League, I think, you know, we just didn't have these new mics figured out. And so it's going to, yep. everything's going to sound a lot better. And so I'm pumped. But we've already yes. been talking now. For two oh, yeah. hours, which right. has actually been a blast. Because <laughs> we've been talking about nothing at all, and I haven't been very helpful. I just, right. I love how you, you yell at me for, like, trying to listen in while I'm talking, but you don't actually tell me what you're doing over there. You're just <laughs> like, like, damn like, it, I'm around. trying to listen. I'm trying <laughs> I'm to listen to this. around <laughs> with the EQ, and I'm, like, trying to figure it out, and you just keep talking, and I'm like, dang it, I keep hearing you in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you I know. I can hear you in the headphones, Tell me to man. put a put a sock in it. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't actually tell rambling. you to stop it. I was I just know. trying to do it in between, That's like, bullshit. statements. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> oh, we've been chatting for way too long. All right, mm. let's get into the Incredibles 2 trailer, right? Ah, Which yeah. Much, teaser. It's a teaser. It's a teaser. It's just, it doesn't even show you any clips, really, of what's going on. So you have no idea what the heck's going on. You just know that Jack-Jack is there. And he's doing all, and he's like, clearly still has all the powers, which is freaking cool. Presumably, um, he's just gonna, like, everything's just gonna pick up where it left off, I guess? Yeah, I guess it's going to pick up exactly where it left off. And and I remember when we were doing, uh, uh, we are talking about what? Uh, Brad Bird, and he was basically when he's writing this or whatever, he was he was talking about how that's how he was going to do it. Like it wasn't going to be in the future or anything. It's just basically going to pick up where it left off. So that'll be right. real interesting to see. The Incredibles is one of my favorite freaking Pixar movies that they've done. It, it is just amazing. Yeah, I mean like, it's it's up there. I think with you know it's in the con- conversation for greatest animated films of all time i think oh yeah and I'll, I'll tell you someone posted i didn't notice this of course but you know uh, so many eyes on the internet and you know breaking down every single little thing yep. someone posted a close-up from that trailer from the hd version yeah and showed what they did with uh robert uh bob parr's shirt yeah. And I cannot believe the detail they put in because oh, the wow. f- the fabric is right on the money for Jeez. being a polo. Even how on the sleeve cuff where the stitching yeah, is, how it changes is. direction. Yeah. And it's got the fuzz on the shirt. Oh my God. So all of that is in the trailer. You can't see it unless you pause it and zoom in. That is look amazing. At it. But the fact that the that even you know the fuzzies are on the shirt and the the texture, the direction of the the weave even changes where it should. It's absolutely yeah. incredible. That's that is amazing. Which is I mean, I remember fitting. one of the things that was so amazing about the Incredibles is that was during that time period where they were still trying to figure out cloth. And how people right. interact with cloth. Yeah. So I think it's really cool that that's even a thing now that they're having that much detail, of like how much the technology's improved. I remember in the when you watch The Incredibles and you watch the the behind the scenes stuff and they do the commentary, that scene where he takes where he basically gets a hole in his yes uh-huh. uniform and he actually you know he picks it up. 
and he puts his finger through the hole. People don't realize how ridiculously hard it was to do just that scene, putting his finger through the hole in the cloth. <laughs> and so in the commentary, they're just like, everybody was just like not happy about it. They wanted us to change it to so that, can he just put his hand like finger around it and just kind of like near it? It doesn't, is he have to, no, through the hole. And it's <laughs> just like, yep. <laughs> and it made like so much extra work because it was so difficult to do back then. And so technology has improved significantly since The Incredibles to see them putting that sort of detail and not being afraid to do it. It's pretty cool. It's yeah. amazing. I just, I am excited about this movie, man. I have been waiting for Incredibles 2 for a while, ever since they first announced it. And if I remember correctly, I thought they were going to release this till 2019. It says it's going to be summer 2018, right? Yeah. I mean, they've been working on it, so. Yep. Yeah. Man, I just I thought it got pushed another year, but it looks like they're they must be just like on target with it. So I I don't know. So I get to see it a little a little quicker, and I'm happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, summer. Yep. Next summer. All right. Anything else about this little That's teaser it. trailer? <laughs> That's it. Other than you know, this is a sequel that I'm actually looking forward to seeing. So. Oh yeah. Yep. All right. So let's take a break, and then let's get into Coco. All right. Aspiring musician Miguel, confronted with his family's ancestral ban on music, enters the land of the dead to work out the mystery. Hmm. This movie is directed by Lee Uncrich, I believe is his name. Okay. He uh, co-directed Toy Story 2, Monsters, Inc., and Finding Nemo, but he also actually did the full direction of Toy Story 3. And this is really common with, with Pixar and a lot of the other animated companies too. I think DreamWorks does this too, where you have a lot of people that are like co-directing things and eventually they get their own project, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So it's I, it's just nice to see that. Like they, they definitely grow with the company. It's pretty cool. I mean, it makes sense to co-direct, to have co-directors on something like an animated feature. Oh, yeah, yeah. uh, Just because of the turnaround time. Even if you are working on it for two years, I mean, there's just way too much stuff, you know, so. Oh, yeah. Yep. This movie starring Anthony Gonzalez as Miguel. He was in The Bridge and Criminal Minds Beyond Borders. So he's actually had a little bit of acting credits considering he's so young. Wow. And I believe this is Gael Garcia Bernal as Hector, who's in Bad Education, The Motorcycle Diaries, and he's currently in the Mozart in the Jungle TV series on Amazon. Mozart in the Jungle. Hmm. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Benjamin Bratt as Ernesto de la Cruz. I always enjoy seeing Benjamin Bratt's name on things. I do too. (laughs) (laughs) He's been around for a while. And he still shows up and stuff, but I love it. I just, I just like. You know, I it. think I enjoy it for a different reason, though, <laughs> and, and and that is because I love having the debate about uh, is Benjamin Bratt actually Lou Diamond Phillips? Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, because you never see them in the same spot; they're never in the same place at the same time. As you know, there's always there's always some time here where I've seen people confused. Benjamin Bratt right. with Lou Diamond Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> chances, chances are it's Benjamin Bratt. It's Benjamin Lou Diamond Bratt. Phillips doesn't yeah. do- <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips doesn't do anything and no one wants no. to put him in anything. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so weird that there's like a confusion there, but it just is what it is. <laughs> Benjamin Bratt was in Law and Order, Demolition Man, and Blood In, Blood Out. And Catwoman. <laughs> I was trying to avoid <laughs> whatever bringing up Catwoman in this uh. podcast, but yes, he was also in that. Alana Ubeck as Mama Imelda. She was in Legally Blonde, Meet the Fockers, and she was also in Rango. Renee Victor as Abuelita. She was the only thing she's really been in is in Weeds, the TV series Weeds, and that's all I saw on her. Huh. Okay. Um, I believe this is Jaime Camille as Papa. He's in Jane the Virgin, and he was also in Secret Life of Pets as one of, as Fernando, one of the dogs. Gotcha. 
Alfonso Aral, I believe is how you pronounce that, who's Papa Julio, he directed Like Water for Chocolate and Romancing the Stone. But he's also the guy, he, you probably know this, Jones, but he was El Guapo in Three Amigos. That's who oh, that is. Oh, <laughs> God, that's awesome. <laughs> yes, wow, that's, how awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's who that is. God, that, that was such, that's such a great performance, too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Pepe, <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of a line. What does plethora mean? Would you say I have a plethora? Would you say that I have a plethora? Yes, El Guapo, who will explain to me what plethora means. <laughs> Why, El Guapo? I just love that. I love how he's just like, after a pause, Why, El Guapo? <laughs> God, that's just so good. You know, I'll have to watch oh, three of these gosh. again. You know, it's funny because, you know, the friend of the podcast that's on every once in a while, Mark, I had never seen Three Amigos until like two months ago or something like that. He let oh, me borrow man. his DVD, which I'm pretty sure I still have and haven't returned to him. Because that's, but, that's, yeah, you would do something <laughs> like that. And so I watched it for the first time and I thought that, that that movie, I thought it was like, okay, but it's one of those movies where I feel like, like a lot of comedies for me just gets better and better if I watch it over and over again. <laughs> but the thing that I really enjoyed about oh, Three Amigos was, was the action of when he kills the invisible swords. Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the lazy shot from Chevy <laughs> Chase where he just fires. Yep. <laughs> he fires it horizontally and shoots the invisible swords <laughs> and dead. Swordsman. And I love oh. seeing, what is it, Martin Short walks over and he picks up the hand and drops it. And it's just like, so, <laughs> it's just like such a ridiculous scene. <laughs> and I, just, I, just, I lost it in that scene. That was my favorite scene in that oh, movie. Oh, that is, that is great. Yeah, that's great. Steve Martin's reaction, I think, yep. to it is great. <laughs> Like the like the other two the other two do do it perfectly. Yep. <laughs> Chevy Chase is just so lazy about firing the gun in the air that he just like you know. <laughs> oh. oh man! If anybody wants to watch Three Amigos, they should do. Oh god, that's watch. funny. If you like comedies, it's it's pretty funny. I know my girlfriend hasn't seen it, and sometimes oh, I just, I'll, I'll start, when we're talking on the phone, I'll start singing My Little Buttercup, and she just has no idea what it's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, All right, Jules, let's okay. take a break. <laughs> what a pleasant we'll surprise. Get, we'll get to Corks and Likes. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jones, we're back here with our Corks and Likes. So, this movie is just amazing. It's just fantastic. So, I have just like these really little commentary things about this movie. And the first thing that I have to say, and it's not even the movie's fault, but that freaking Frozen short at the very beginning of this movie made me want to lose my shit because it was like the, that short is like 20, yes. 20 minutes long right you're right and so it got to the point where i was even i thought i had walked into the wrong theater like i was in the theater and i'm like this is because first of all it, it gives you like we know it's a pixar movie yet it starts with walt disney right, animations yeah. and so then you get this like frozen thing with olaf's adventure and i'm like wait what so let's so first of all it's not a pixar short which is weird and and i'm looking at it and i'm like what the heck is and it's not even that great of a short no so it's it just like and they squeeze in like so many musical numbers like all together it's like one big advertisement for frozen 2 and it's 20 minutes long before you see coco so after basically after ads and this short the movie doesn't start till like 40 minutes right yeah i i completely agree and you know the thing is i just thought about that when we sat down and hit record yeah. Because I didn't list that, but 
the short is terrible. I mean, it yes. isn't funny enough. It isn't, you know. It doesn't capture enough of your attention at no, all. It really doesn't. I mean, it, and it's almost, it's almost kind of, I mean, it's disjointed. And you're right. There's too many music, musical numbers. Yeah, they throw like so, six in there. I mean, I could see two, one at the beginning and one at the end. Even one in the middle it. would be fine, but, but there's like uh, six. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, it was just out of control. And and the thing is, the thing that's funny about it is, is I, it got to the point where I had to look up and research why it's there. Because usually Pixar movies have Pixar shorts in front of them. And Disney movies have Disney shorts in them. So I was trying to figure out what the heck was going on, and apparently Disney had made the decision to tack this on, and apparently Olaf's Adventure was supposed to be, like, on TV or something. And so it, it that's the reason why the runtime's like 20-something minutes, because there's oh, supposed to be commercials right, in yeah, there. Yeah, okay, so, like on ABC, probably. Yeah, it was supposed right? to be on, like, ABC or something. It was supposed to be a special, like, Christmas thing. Or, you know, a holiday special for, for this. But they decided to tack it in front of this movie. And you're just like, what the heck is going on? And you know what? The, the other thing that I read about this short that happened basically, I think, like two or three days ago. Disney basically announced that they are taking it off of this movie. So they requested the theaters to remove the short because they were getting so many complaints. Yeah. And they basically said that, well, for the extra time, just show another thing of Coco. Because Coco itself is only like an hour and 45 minutes long. But the runtime of the whole thing is like two hours and ten minutes. It's absolutely ridiculous. For especially, Yeah, for an animated movie where you got little kids. Yeah. You know, I mean... No, it's it, it's too long. The whole thing. It's way too yeah. long. And, and, and it just... It, that whole sequence is probably the biggest thing that I hate about this the movie Coco has nothing to do with Coco. It's the frozen short. The beginning yeah, of it no, just angers I, me. I agree. the The thing is, I don't like the movie Frozen at all. I think it's way overrated. That's fine. But that's fair. <laughs> I will. I will give it some credit. Okay. Yes. But this short is not well written, and no. and I think it's terrible. I don't. Th- I don't think it's funny enough. I mean, like, and when you hear the name. The thing is, Olaf kind of drove me crazy anyway. But, I mean, yes. you know, he is sort of the heart of that movie. Yes, he is. When you hear Olaf's big adventure, you're thinking something else and not this depressing... Oh, yeah. You know, it's a wonderful life type type of ripoff. Which and it's, made... And it's just too long. Yeah, and it would have made more sense if it was an actual just story about Olaf doing something or whatever, but having it be them trying to find their family tradition is just like this really weird thing and it's it's kind of depressing. And it's just it just puts you in a really like tough mood before Coco. Right, yeah. Which really I think just hurts Coco because Coco's brilliant. So I mean <laughs> it's just yeah, it's too long and you know, it, it could have just been some fun thing. Yeah. You know. I don't understand why it couldn't have been some fun thing, keep the runtime to 10 minutes or less, and then be done with it. But that's not what happened. You got this ridiculous thing with all these musical numbers in it that's just not that great. And and I think it I think it hurts Coco just because it's in front of it. So now that I've done with my little rant about the Frozen short okay. <laughs> that just <laughs> angered me so much, I only have one little thing to say and the co- to comment on this movie and the way Coco is is the the concept of this family really holds it a grudge against music for like generations (laughs) I have I've never seen or heard of a family where a guy runs out you know autumn and then everything about that person they've completely cut out (laughs) completely cut out entirely and even the median that he plays in, like, they're just like, nope, nothing at all. I'm not dealing with this whatsoever. I thought that was just like, this family is out of control to ban well, music. Right. But I mean, you know, that's, <laughs> that. that's a, it's a matriarchal family. Yes. Yes, For sure. Is. And I mean, I'll tell you, it reminded me, and I mean, it was 
in a in a touching way, but in a way that was sort of scary. I mean, it reminded me of uh, my grandma on the Filipino side, how she ran her household, and uh, yeah. my aunt Chong, who would absolutely take off her sandal and chase one of the boys <laughs> around the house if they ever talked back, or you know, oh, <laughs> was yeah. so I. So, I mean, it, it's weird because, I mean, those are two different, culturally two different backgrounds, yes. you know, Filipino and South Korean. But, um, yes, I definitely, I definitely could, like, I, I had some flashbacks to my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's funny that you say that we're in the court section, but that's one of the things I liked about this movie also is... There's a lot of little things that happens where it feels like a family, like there's a lot of family in this, and it feels that way, and there's definitely, like, I feel like everybody's had definitely a female member of their family that's like these characters, you know? Right, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, it was just great. I, I just really enjoyed that. But that was my only little, my lonely little comment about this movie. This movie's great, so we're, I'm right. going to switch it to you, and maybe okay. we could talk talk some stuff through here. Sure. Uh, you know, I th- I thought the the first thing was as I was sitting there, was that okay? This, the like, within five minutes, I thought I had the story figured out, and maybe yes. you felt the same way. So I did. I, so I really kind of I sat back in my seat and I was just like, oh, you know. This is too simple. I, I really hope this isn't what it is. And so I was really happy about it when, uh, you know, it turns out that, you know, Hector was killed. And, you know, it, it, it even turned into this, like, telenovela type deal. But, but I didn't mind it because it was such a nice little twist that, you know, Ernesto de la Cruz had screwed Hector over. And, yes. Uh, yes. You know, so I was really happy about it when those elements started falling into place. Oh, yeah. It was great because one of the things you're that I think you're referring to about knowing the story is it didn't take long at all that I had already known Ernesto was the missing family member. Like, I, I knew it almost immediately. As soon as they said that, you know, his picture's not on the ofrenda and, and all that other stuff, I'm just like, I already know what's happening. Like, I already know that that Ernesto de la Cruz is probably not the right person to follow, and it's actually Hector. Like, I knew that almost immediately when you met when you met that character, and so I was I was already was kind of playing through the rest of the movie and how it how it would eventually branch to that. Right. But adding in the murder element was just like whoa. I didn't think it was that, you know, like I just, I did not, <laughs> I wasn't right, expecting yeah. having this extra little thing where he's just like, where Ernesto de la Cruz is basically, will will do anything to stay on top, like, and to get there. And so it was such a, it was such a different thing that really added an extra flavor to the movie that I thought made it significantly better. Cause I definitely had a problem with the, you know, having the torn photo and I'm like, it's got to be, it has to be Hector. Like, it just has to be. And it ended up being Hector. But adding everything else in was really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, that was the thing that I was stewing on. And then when, it, you know, then when there's a shift, and it happens kind of quickly, but there's yes. a little bit of a, uh, there's a little bit of a tip that it, it just was a pleasant surprise, really. You know, yes. I, I all of a sudden was just like, wow, that's, fantastic it just didn't seem like pixar to be so completely straightforward yes with with everything uh you know i um the only other thing i had as a quirk was that i felt like the dog was exactly like santa's little helper and so I had a huge problem with that. And I was you just mean like, in appearance? In appearance, the way it acted, like everything about it was just a 3D you, version of Santa's Little Helper. Are you kidding me? No, I'm I, not. I never made that connection I mean, at it's, all. The thing is... From The Simpsons? It's blatantly obvious. Yes, from, from The Simpsons. The Sim- <laughs> I mean, tell me how he isn't Santa's Little Helper. How And well, how he acts, the stuff well, that he does... 
<laughs> and how he I looks. Think, I think three. I think I think Dante specifically, as opposed to Santa's little helper, is way dumber. I think because Santa's little helper is just kind of like a dog. It does weird things, but this dog was just like overly exaggerated doing dumb things. Like it was such a weird thing. I just I can't believe at some point no one said something about because it. Because I I didn't make that connection either. Uh, That's crazy. I, I, know. I think it's <laughs> God. There's been twenty plus years of Simpsons cartoons. Oh, it's almost thirty you know, now. I mean, <laughs> so I that I had a huge problem with. Okay. All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it for Quartz. That's a That's shame, because I really Two enjoyed things. the dog. Okay. I I enjoyed the dog. That was one of my likes. I, I loved the way the dog was the whole time, because a lot of the comedy stuff is from the dog. And one of my favorite scenes with the dog is when he's following Miguel up, and, or following Miguel back down from, like, the cellar after he was playing the music and watching the old De La Cruz videos. And I just love how the dog, like, Miguel does this little hop, skip down, and the dog just, like, just falls <laughs> down. It just, <laughs> just, like, right, yeah. just, like, this dog is completely unaware of its surroundings. <laughs> it's just, like, such a terrible dog. And then, like, to have the payoff in the end, where he actually is a spirit guide, and he's actually trying to, like, even the scene where he's trying to pull Miguel back to what, at the time, he didn't know was his family, which was Hector, when he runs away. So having scenes like that, I just loved with the dog. Like, it no, was no, no. so good. So, I mean, but you're <laughs> right. I mean, what the dog represents, yes. I think, needs to be in, you know, and, oh, yeah. and how it comes about, I think, is fine. I mean, I yeah. you know, it makes you like the character. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, it's everything else about it, to me, is just a blatant ripoff of Santa's little helper. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh man, the only other thing I can think of that just came to my head that I, I remember when I was in the movie theater that I didn't really understand is obviously uh, Imelda, the matriarchal, you know, the great grandmother at the very top. She's aware of Hector. Yes. And you, you don't know it until like the very end of the movie so it's so weird that like there was never a connection made at all until the very end so it's like they've been there for years because they've both been gone so like it's not like this is not an unusual this isn't an unusual thing and they never made a connection because Hector was aware that I mean they were together so like there's there's not like he didn't know who they who they were and that they were together. So it was so weird that there was never a connection made between those two characters until the very end, as if it was a new thing. And they didn't say that it was a new thing and they definitely acted like they knew each other. But to have Hector not bring up Imelda at all and then have Imelda not bring up Hector at all, all the way up yeah. to that point was really weird. To you me. know, that's one of those plot bunny type things that will yes. sometimes come back and bite you in the ass. Uh, yes. You know, the reason being, you know, Hector tells Miguel not to sing Remember Me, but yes. Remember Me is his song. And so and yes. Hector never mentions that. Yeah. And so following that thread that you just brought up, well, all the evidence was with Coco the entire time, the original yes. poems and the lyrics and everything. Everything. Yep. And so wouldn't Imelda know that? You know, I would, and, I would think so. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, but that is, I mean, that's exactly that. I mean, that's one of those things where when you try to be a little bit clever and hold something back, yes. you know, it's, it's like, well, couldn't this have just happened? And, yep. you know, I mean, that's sort of how it was like, and this happens all the time in movies, but I mean, like in, for example, in The Force Awakens, at the very yeah. start of that movie, Kylo Ren has Poe, and he could have just tortured him for the location of the Resistance base, and that yes. would have ended the the movie. But yes. you just can't do that, because then you don't have a movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Precisely. I mean, it's like, and, and any horror movie where a bunch of teens run someone off the road, 
And, yeah. you know, they could have called 911 and been fine. It just would have been an, <laughs> a terrible accident. But they don't. They cover it up. And then yep. you have a movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> otherwise, you don't get it. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Likes. Likes, All likes, right, likes. So, likes. likes. So the first thing I want to say is Pixar does this just about every single movie they do. They always take a leap forward for in terms of technical advantage or technical, technical advances. And I thought that one of the things that I really loved about this movie was the visuals. It's a very beautiful movie. There's so much really incredible lighting in this movie. And there's also a ton of just like, Kind of like how one of the things that I thought was amazingly done, which was Coco with her like wrinkles in her skin. It looked so good. Like it looked really good how how detailed it was. The only problem I had with that was it made it look kind of almost like she was in her own movie, which was kind of weird. Mm, yeah. Go I, ahead. Yeah, I can I can see that a little bit. Yeah, so it, even though it was like just brilliant and just so much detail, it just almost looked like she was a completely like she was like almost hyper realistic as opposed to everyone else who was not. So she, it was kind of weird, but then I almost was okay with it because you got more of the payoff when she wakes up at the end and she actually starts singing. So you get this payoff where there's so much life to her all of a sudden and looks brighter just like uh everyone else is in the movie. Um, I already talked about how much I love the dog and what the dog represents. But the other thing I really thought was just a fun thing was having that ridiculous, like, dance fight at the end of the movie where she's, <laughs> like, she's singing the song and they're doing these dramatic movements, but they're actually trying to take each other out. So, like, there's so many scenes where he's, like, even when he's just trying to, like, pick her up he like acts as if she's like dancing, but really he's trying to keep her from running the hell away. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was like, pretty clever. I love how they did this performance, yet it was like them basically trying to get away from each other. <laughs> it was just like such a great scene. I loved everything about that scene. The last thing I'll say, and I'll go ahead and get into to Jones here, is the only thing I want to say is is uh the thing we said earlier, I like seeing Benjamin Brett and things. So like having him show up <laughs> okay. and be Ernesto de la Cruz is fantastic. So, you know, I just, I love seeing him at crap, but I don't know why that is, but I enjoy seeing Benjamin Brett's name on the screen. And that was it. What do you got? Well, just, you know, touching visually on, on everything. I mean, it, it might be one of the more impressive things I, I think we've ever seen in an am, animated film, especially, um, you know, the afterlife city where, I mean, they oh, literally yeah. have millions of lights. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible how they oh, did yeah. it. And I'm sure that is not an exaggeration, you know? No. And I, I saw how it was composited together, but I mean, those are still all buildings that, you know, are lit yep. and, all buildings, all lit, and all the lights is, is just amazing. And then they had the atmospheric look to it right. to make it yeah. look otherworldly. It was just it was just so visually beautiful. The Land of the Dead was just gorgeous that they that they did. It was just incredible. And a lot of artists put a lot of work in that <laughs> to get it to look that way. I thought um, the, uh, the character rigging, Oh, uh, and the animation, and uh, of course, this is just where Pixar does everything better than oh, yeah. anyone Everybody in the else. industry. Yep. But I mean, I really loved how Hector was animated because oh, yeah. you got to see, and you know, I mean, he's really down on his luck, but you got to see everything. You know how his ribs moved, and you know he's constantly yep. doing, constantly taking off bones and you know i just oh, yeah. i thought that was really a, a cool touch you know there's just oh, yeah. a lot of little things you know in how some of the characters fight and oh, how, yeah. how they move around which is and you know there's this funny joke where miguel's trying to blend in and so he's walking just like hector and you know, <laughs> hector's just an absolute mess and uh, and i just i love little things like that yeah, the animation in this movie was incredible. I can't imagine 
trying to get the character rigs to work with this. It would have been really difficult. I know. Yeah. Trying to deal with that. And that, that's another one of those technical advancements that they're, they're just way better than everybody else. Like you were saying, you know, I, I, I just, I loved, um, you know, I, I really thought message wise, it had a good message and, you know, it, yeah. it had me crying in the theater. So, I mean, this is just, this is absolutely one of my favorite, animated features the issues that i yes. had were so tiny that i just don't even give a sh you know I, yeah. I i don't care about them at all and yep. you're right the worst thing about this movie is having to watch the frozen short at the beginning because <laughs> i mean coco is right up there for me when i when i yep. start thinking about greatest animated films ever i mean i i think i've got this up there with like you know lion king Oh, yeah. and and beauty of the, beauty and the beast so yep. I, mean, I mean it it deserves to be in that conversation oh yeah it does so you know everything about it there was there was only one little thing and i just now thought of it but i i love the scene where you know they figure out they're related when they're in that uh uh pit i i love, oh, yeah. I love that the bad guy actually has a giant pit to throw people <laughs> into uh, <laughs> But the, oh, but there yeah. was one little thing. The scene is so beautiful, and again, I don't oh, care gorgeous. about it. But uh, you know how Miguel was tossed in the water, and I just kind of felt like, well, you know, um, Hector should look like he's wet too. Yeah, <laughs> and and that was just sort of one thing that they didn't do, and no, so I was just didn't. a little, I was a little disappointed <laughs> about that. But yep. uh, you know, ever everything. I mean, you know, it does doesn't take away from the importance of that scene. It's yep, it's all good. Yeah, it's just just amazing. You got anything else? That's it. All right. Well, I guess we'll just go ahead and rate it then. I mean, this movie is amazing. It is. It's brilliant. It the the visuals are great. The story is good. The cast and the performances are great. I really enjoy. Hector as a character it is just so so good and it has such an emotional story and an emotional uh, backstory and just everything's just so freaking good and, and all of our problems with the movie are so minor it doesn't even matter and then one of the bigger problems you have is the frozen short at the beginning so I can't imagine and the thing is is even though you have you feel cheated <laughs> watching the frozen short so you don't feel good by the time this right. movie starts yeah. you're already you are already like upset before the movie starts and so then having this movie still just be like brilliant and amazing and you don't even care that you had to wait for it i think just shows you how much better this movie is it is so good it's one of the best animated movies i've ever seen and i'm just going to go ahead and say that there's that there's no way it's not going to win the Academy Award for Best Animated Picture. Oh, and I yeah. think it should be in the running for other Academy Awards also. And so I'm just going to go ahead and say see it and buy it. I think it's amazing. I agree. It's, um, you know, when I, th when I think about greatest animated films ever, I think this has to be in the conversation. Oh, yeah. I will say see it, buy it. All right. Awesome. So we're both see it, buy it. The movie's great. Everybody see it and buy it. <laughs> 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 all right so i guess we're gonna sign out then jones yeah let's sign out buddy long right. day long morning but it's been <laughs> fun <laughs> <laughs> oh man we're recording late all right so if anybody wants to contact us we always have our home on the web at halfpastpodcast.com like us on facebook we're on itunes and we're on google play Okay, we're also on Stitcher, Libsyn, and now tune in. Tune in. <laughs> Email us at halfpastcast at gmail.com. That's halfpastcast at gmail.com. Always connected to that. Send us emails if you got questions or anything like that. Tweet us at halfpastpodcast. And thanks everybody for listening and thanks everybody for your support. It's in. It's been real fun doing this podcast with you, Jones. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a blast, buddy. This is a fun one. All uh, right, so I think, I think our next one's going to be Star Wars, and I might need to record yes. that in the afternoon on Sunday, man. Okay, we'll see what we'll do with Star Wars. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll get that one done. 
I definitely want to still get the Shape of Water done. We were yes. discussing that in the last podcast. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and try to do a makeup cast for that one after you recover a little bit. You have to. And yeah. You have to do that one. It's Guillermo del Toro. We, we got to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do that one and we'll get everything done. But the next one will probably be Star Wars. Wonderful. All right. Awesome. <laughs> this is the Half Pass Podcast. I'm Graham Ricks. Jonesy. See you next flick. Play I'm some music. Be more, you know, bad Spanish in this podcast, but there yeah. was no bad Spanish, right? There was nothing I at could, all. I could have been much more offensive. <laughs>